Lord Shiva's family. Lord Shiva is one of the main deities of Hindu Trimurti Trinity in the Indian mythology. He married goddess Parvati and lived in the caves of Mount Kailash in the Himalayas. Shiva and Parvati had two sons named Kartike and Ganesha and one daughter named Ashok Sundari. Kartike was the first son of Shiva and Parvati and the elder brother of Ganesha. He was also known as Kumar and Shanmukh. Once Shiva and Kartike left Mount Kailash to destroy the demons. Parvati started feeling lonely in their absence. To drive out her solitude, she approached the wish-fulfilling divine tree, the Ashok, and asked for a daughter. Her wish was granted. The daughter was named Ashok Sundari. Ganesha was the youngest child of Shiva and Parvati. He is one of the most popular gods. He is also called the remover of obstacles and the god of wisdom. It is believed that Parvati created Ganesha from the sandal turmeric paste that she had made to cleanse her body while bathing. Shiva and his attendants Shiva had many attendants called the Ganas. The Ganas were supernatural beings with terrifying faces and bodies. The chief of the Ganas was Nandi. Nandi was also the vehicle, Vahan of Shiva and the gatekeeper of his abode. According to a legend, Nandi was the son of Sage Shilad. He was devoted to Shiva right from his childhood. He once requested Shiva to let him always remain by his side. Shiva smiled and granted Nandi's wish gladly. Shiva also told Nandi that he had lost his bull on which he travelled. So Nandi would get the face of a bull and be his vehicle from then on. You will always be my friend and companion. You will head all my ganas too, Shiva said. Apart from Nandi, Bring, Veerbhadra, Chandeshwar were the most important ganas of Shiva. All the ganas were completely devoted to Shiva and obeyed all the commands that he used to give them. Goddess Parvati and Nandi The Ganas of Shiva could roam around anywhere in Mount Kailash. Parvati was not very happy with the freedom of the Ganas as they sometimes used to disturb her privacy. One day, Parvati was preparing to take her bath. She did not want to be disturbed, so she told Nandi to guard the door and not let anyone inside. As Nandi was a faithful attendant, he agreed and started guarding the entrance. After some time, Shiva arrived. Nandi got really confused. He thought, how can I ask my master to take permission first before entering his own home? When Parvati saw Shiva in front of her, she felt embarrassed. She was not happy at the sudden entry of Shiva. She also became very angry with Nandi. All the Ganas here are more loyal to Shiva than me. I need someone who will obey me and only me, she thought. After some days, Shiva went to the mountains to meditate. Then Parvati created Ganesha. Creation of Ganesha Parvati decided to create a Gana for herself as all the Ganas and Nandi obeyed Shiva's commands first. One day, Parvati was smearing her body with sandal and turmeric paste. Suddenly, an idea struck her. She rubbed the paste off her body. She created an idol of a little boy from the sandal turmeric paste residue. Then she chanted some holy mantras and sprinkled the holy Ganges water on the idol to give life to it. The idol got transformed into a handsome boy. Parvati was delighted to see her newly created son. The boy with both his palms joined in reverence, bowed down and saluted her. Mother, Parvati lovingly took him in her arms and showered her blessings on him. Then she said to him, Dear son, you will only follow my commands from now onwards. I will do whatever you say, mother, said Parvati's son to her. 
This is how Ganesha was created. Ganesha stops Shiva. One day, Parvati was getting ready for her bath. She told Ganesha, Son, do not let anyone come inside while I am bathing. Parvati also gave him a spear for his safety. Ganesha started guarding Parvati's bathing chamber. A little later, Shiva reached his cave. To his surprise, he saw a young boy guarding the entrance of the cave. As Shiva was about to enter the cave, Ganesha stopped him and said, My mother is bathing. Nobody is allowed to go inside now. Shiva was amused. My wife Parvati is your mother. That makes you my son. But then, I have never seen you before. So I am not your father. The boy raised his fear and said, I have not seen you either. I will not allow you to enter, you strange man with matted hair and crawling snakes. It is my duty to make sure no one enters the cave without my mother's permission. Shiva was furious, but Ganesha did not move. Ganesha defeats the Ganas. Shiva ignored Ganesha and tried to enter his house. But Ganesha hit him with his spear. Shiva turned red with anger. He ordered his Ganas to get rid of the boy. Shiva's Ganas rushed in and stood before Ganesha. Do you have any idea who Shiva is? He is our master and this cave belongs to him. You had better leave this place or else we will have to throw you out forcefully. Paying no heed to these words, Ganesha courageously stood his ground. At Shiva's order, the Ganas charged towards little Ganesha. The Ganas were armed with different kinds of weapons. The Ganas tried different ways to attack Ganesha. Nandi and Bring started pulling his legs in opposite directions. But Ganesha struck their hands and saved himself. The Ganas were actually no match for the little Ganesha. They all were scared of Ganesha. Now they scrambled away in all directions to save themselves. Ganesha once again stood guard at the entrance. Ganesha fights against the gods. Sage Narad saw that Ganesha had defeated all the Ganas of Shiva. He persuaded Brahma, Vishnu and Indra to reach Mount Kailash along with the other gods. Everyone thought he was probably being tricked by Shiva and Parvati. Still, all of them hurried to aid Shiva. Parvati saw all the gods approaching. She became worried about her son. So Parvati created two powerful Shaktis, goddesses, for Ganesha's help. She then ordered both the goddesses to stand beside her son and help him. One goddess opened her mouth as wide as a hollow in a mountain and swallowed all the weapons hurled at Ganesha. The other goddess put on a dreadful form ready to defeat and punish Ganesha's enemies. Ganesha conquered all his enemies and won the battle. The gods shuddered with the impact of Ganesha's blows. They gathered around Shiva and begged for protection. Lord, this boy is extraordinary. Please save our lives. Ganesha will destroy us. Shiva beheads Ganesha. All the Ganas and the gods were defeated by little Ganesha. Shiva was furious. It had now become a matter of his honor. So he himself came forward to fight against the little boy. But Ganesha was completely ready to fight against him. So as soon as Shiva lifted his trident, it was immediately struck down by Ganesha. Furious at his trident being struck down, Shiva picked his bow, Pinaka, up. But his bow was soon demolished by Ganesha's spear. The valiant son of Parvati easily defeated Shiva even with his ten arms. With Shiva's permission, Vishnu created an illusion of blinding clouds and split open Ganesha's spear 
with his divine disgust. The little boy struck back at Vishnu with his broken spear, throwing Vishnu to the ground. Vishnu instantly got up and resumed the fight with Ganesha. Immediately, Shiva seized the opportunity and attacked Ganesha from behind. He slashed off Ganesha's head with his trident. Parvati's anger On being stopped from entering his own home, Shiva had in a great fit of fury cut off his own son's head. When Parvati saw her son's lifeless body, she became furious. How could you do this? She screamed at Shiva. You have killed our son. Parvati was miserable. But soon she took the form of the terrifying goddess Shakti. She threatened to destroy all the gods. The gods tried to plead with the distraught Parvati. Shiva himself tried to pacify her. He accepted his defeat and pleaded with her not to destroy the gods. Parvati was still in her Shakti form and was on a destruction rampage. All the gods were in a great fear and they started praying to Shiva to sort out the issue. Shiva once again requested Parvati to calm down, but she demanded that her son Ganesha be brought back to life. Shiva consoles Parvati. The sight of the lifeless body of her son agonized Parvati and she vehemently rebuked Shiva. Shiva was feeling so helpless, but he promised Parvati that he would bring Ganesha back to life. He tried to convince Parvati and said, I will give him a new lease of life. No sooner had he said this than a large bird swooped up the head from the ground. Parvati was inconsolable at this sight. She shrieked in grief. What will happen now? Don't worry dear, I will find a fresh head and get it for him, Shiva said. But there is none lying around, lamented Parvati. Oh, I will get one from earth. Shiva consoled Parvati. Shiva then instructed the gods to wash Ganesha's headless body. I will go southwards and cut off the head of the first creature I meet. Then I will fit it onto Ganesha's body, he said. And Shiva hurried southwards with his trident. Ganesha gets an elephant's head. Shiva set on a southward journey in the quest of a head. He wandered here and there but could not find any human head that would fit Ganesha's body. Suddenly, he found a recently severed head of an elephant's calf. Thinking that it would be just what he needed, Shiva picked the severed head up and turned back towards Mount Kailash. How Ganesha got an elephant's head is explained in various stories. According to a legend, the elephant's head was one of the several heads of the Airavat. Airavat, a magnificent elephant produced by the churning of the ocean of milk, was the mount of Indra, the king of gods. This head was offered to Shiva by Indra to help him out of his difficulty. Indra had met sage Durvasa who had offered him a celestial garland. Indra accepted it and put it on the trunk of Airavat. But Eravat was irritated by its smell and threw it to the ground. An enraged Durvasa cut off Eravat's head and he offered the head to Shiva. Parvati's Displeasure Finally, Shiva found a head to join onto the body of Ganesha. Meanwhile, Parvati was grieving over her son who was killed guarding the entrance to her cave. The gods and the sages did not know how to console her. Shiva soon reached Mount Kailash with the elephant's head and fixed it on Ganesha's lifeless body. Using his divine powers, Shiva then restored Ganesha's life. Amidst the chanting of mantras, Ganesha stood up and paid respect to all. Shiva was overjoyed. He said to Parvati, 
Parvati, look at our son. He looks flawless. But Parvati was not satisfied with this new form of her son. She was still furious with her husband. People will now make fun of him. He is looking very odd. A god with an elephant said. Everyone will poke fun at him and call him a funny character. She lamented. Ganesha becomes Lord Ganesha. Parvati was not pleased with the elephant's head of her son. She thought Ganesha would be the butt of jokes everywhere. But Shiva tried to reason with Parvati. Tell me, I will do whatever that will make you happy, he said. Parvati asked him to pass an order that all gods and humans should show great respect to her son. Also, every worship, puja, or sacrificial ritual, Yagna should start with the worship of Ganesha. Make him the head of your Ganas too, she insisted. Shiva consented happily to all her demands. He also blessed Ganesha that whoever worships him with devotion would be free from trouble. Parvati was very happy. She embraced her son lovingly. Oh my Gajanan, elephant-headed, my Ganpati, Gana chief, my Ganesha. A delighted Parvati then brought Ganesha some sweetened cereal balls, laddus or modaks. He quickly gobbled down all of them. Since then, Ganesha is worshipped first before beginning any religious festivals or auspicious events or rituals. Elephant's Head of Ganesha and Demon Sindhu There are many stories that tell how Ganesha came to have the head of an elephant. According to a legend, there was a demon named Sindhu. He had entered into Parvati's body when she was carrying Ganesha. Because of his mischief, baby Ganesha was born headless. Sindhu had cut off Ganesha's head even before he made his arrival into the world. Everyone was shocked to see a baby alive and kicking but without a head. Parvati was inconsolable. Narad had also come to visit the newborn baby. He asked the infant to go and get a head for himself. Once a king had been disrespectful towards Narad. Narad cursed him to turn into an elephant shaped demon. This demon was called Gajasur the elephant demon. Narad told Ganesha to slash off Gajasur's head and fit it into his own headless form. Ganesha cut off the elephant's head of the demon with just one stroke. He stuck it onto himself and thenceforth came to be called Gajanan. Curse on Shiva and Ganesha's lost head According to one legend, it was a curse on Shiva that had made Ganesha lose his head. Once, Surya, the sun god, was about to hit two devotees of Shiva named Mali and Sumali. But Shiva had hit out at Surya with his three-pronged spear, the Trishul, to protect Mali and Sumali. Surya had fallen unconscious and the world had grown sunless and dark. Sage Kashyap was Surya's father. He was filled with terrible fury when he saw Surya lying unconscious. He cursed Shiva, saying, One day you shall be the cause of the death of your own son. Then you will understand my anguish. Ganesha was born absolutely normal, but Shiva was unaware of his birth and ended up killing his own son. You are entirely to blame. You angered Sage Kashyap, cried Parvati. Shiva started looking for a head. Indra came forth with the head of his mount Eravat. It was Eravat's head that Ganesha carries on his shoulders. Shani's Gaze and Birth of Ganesha Once Parvati kept a year-long fast to please Lord Vishnu as she desired to have a son. After one year, 
Vishnu was appeased and fulfilled her desire. This son was one of Lord Krishna's many incarnations. Shiva and Parvati celebrated the birth of their son by inviting all the gods to their home in Mount Kailash. All came to rejoice and bless the baby who was named Ganesha by his divine parents. Young Ganesha was showered with gifts from the gods but one god refused to look at the child. This was Surya's son Shani. It is believed that Shani's gaze signifies a bad omen for whomever it falls upon. This was the reason why Shani did not want to cast his eyes on young Ganesha. Parvati was puzzled. When asked the reason for Shani's odd behavior, Parvati was told that Shani's wife had cursed him that whatever he looked at would be destroyed immediately. Shani's gaze harms Ganesha. Shani avoided looking at the newborn child of Shiva and Parvati, saying his gaze would harm the child. Parvati did not take Shani's words seriously. She insisted that Shani should look at the face of his nephew and bless him. Finally, Shani gave in to Parvati's insistence. The moment Shani looked at young Ganesha, his head fell off and was turned to ashes. Parvati was shocked with grief. The furious goddess cursed Shani to become lame. Vishnu came to Parvati's aid. Mounting his vahan, he immediately went to fetch a replacement head for Ganesha. He found the head of a young elephant on the banks of a river and picked it up. Vishnu placed this head onto the lifeless form of Ganesha who was immediately brought back to life. Shiva and Parvati were overjoyed and very relieved to see their son alive. Thus the mischievous and ever smiling god Ganesha was born. Gaj Mukhasur and Shiva There is yet another tale about Ganesha and his elephant's head. According to a legend, there once lived a demon who had the head of an elephant and the body of a demon since birth. His name was Gaj Mukhasur, who lived like a monk and ardently worshipped Shiva. He prayed devotedly for years. Finally, Shiva appeared before him and promised to grant him his wish. Gaj Mukhasar asked Shiva to grant him the boon to stay unconquered forever and that no human, celestial being or animal could kill him. He also wished that no weapon of any kind could ever kill him. He was granted both these boons. Gaj Mukhasar continued to pray even more rigorously to Shiva who appeared before him again. This time, Gaj Mukhasur wanted Shiva to reside in his stomach. Shiva, widely known to grant any wish of his fervent devotees, fulfilled Gaj Mukhasur's this wish too and started living in the demon's stomach. Gaj Mukhasur and Vishnu Gaj Mukhasur became invincible by making Shiva reside in his stomach. As a result, he inflicted terror upon the inhabitants of both heaven and earth. When Shiva did not return, Parvati was so worried. She thought for a while and went to Vishnu for help. Vishnu is the preserver of the world and has divine powers. He disguised himself as a celestial flautist and went to Gaj Mukhasur. Gaj Mukhasar was enchanted by the melodious sound of the flute and danced to the music played by Vishnu. The demon was absolutely oblivious to the fact that the flautist was none other than Vishnu himself. Delighted with the music, he haughtily told the flautist to ask him for anything. Vishnu, in the garb of a flautist, teased him by saying, you cannot fulfill my wish, Gaj Mukhasar. Vishnu wanted to trick the demon into releasing Shiva from his stomach. Gaj Mukhasar releases Shiva. Gaj Mukhasar grew agitated 
when the flautist told him that he couldn't fulfill his wish. He insisted that the flautist should ask for anything in the world and he would be given the same. Vishnu was waiting for this moment. He asked Gajmukhasur to release Shiva who was residing in his belly. Gajmukhasur was shocked with the flautist's wish. Instantly, he knew that the flautist was Vishnu himself as Vishnu was the only one who could have known about Shiva's whereabouts. The demon set Shiva free since he had given his word to the flautist. But in the process of releasing Shiva, the demon died. Before breathing his last, the demon requested Shiva to enable his head to be remembered forever. His dying wish was honored by Shiva as he gave the demon's head to his son Ganesha. Parvati and Ganga The Puranas narrate yet another story of Ganesha's birth. Once Parvati bathed on the banks of river Ganga, the used path water was then poured back into the river. It is believed that this water was gulped down by the goddess Malini who had an elephant's head. Malini later on gave birth to a boy who had four arms and five heads of elephants. Goddess Ganga claimed that this multiple elephant-headed infant was her son. On the other hand, Parvati also stated that the child was hers. They both had an argument. They took the issue to Shiva and asked him for a solution. One of the several names of Shiva is Kailash, meaning one who bestows peace. Shiva resolved the dispute by announcing that Parvati was the mother of the baby with five heads of elephants. Shiva then united the five heads of the child into one and named him Vignesh, meaning remover of obstacles. Modak Priya Ganesha Parvati was very happy when Shiva fulfilled her demands to bless Ganesha to be worshipped first in any rituals among the gods. Now little Ganesha became Lord Ganesha and he was blessed to be worshipped first in any rituals by all human beings. To celebrate the happiness, Parvati gave him a plate of sweetened cereal balls, modaks or laddus. Modak is a sweet dish that looks like dumplings. Curling his trunk, Ganesha picked one up, then another and yet another. The gods and the sages witnessing the sight were very amused and fondly said, See how Ganesha loves these Modaks. Modaks are his favorites. Since then, he was called Modak Priya. Modaks were thenceforth always offered to Ganesha during all worships and on Ganesh Chaturthi too. People believe that the lovable Ganpati's heart can be won over by feeding him laddus. Ganesha's brother Kartike's birth Once a demon named Tarak was tormenting all the gods. Tarkasur had pleased Brahma with his severe penance and won a boon of becoming unconquerable. Brahma informed the gods that only a son of Shiva could kill Tarkasur. So Shiva married Parvati and a son was born to them. But one day the child was lost. The Ganas tried their best to locate the child but in vain. Six goddesses named the Kritikas, stars, were taking their bath in river Ganga when they found a boy floating by. The Kritikas were very happy to find the child. They argued with one another over who would nurse the enchanting child, each claiming the child to be her own. The boy did not want them to argue over him, so he acquired six heads and six mouths. Ever since, the boy is also called Shadanan, six-faced, and as he was raised by Kritikas, Shadanan was named Kartike. The Kritikas raised Kartike as their own child. 
Kartike is birth and Lord Agni. There exists another tale about Kartike's birth. One day, Shiva and Parvati were disturbed by Agni while they were relaxing. Parvati was displeased and cursed Agni by giving him a little of Shiva's energy. Agni could not stand the heat and got very agitated. He begged Shiva to forgive him. Shiva advised Agni to give out this energy to those who were shivering in the cold. The next morning, Agni came across the wives of seven pious sages who were taking a dip in the river. All of them were shivering in the cold water. Agni came to their aid and transferred Shiva's energy that was inside him to them. Out of these seven, only six wives could bear the energy given to him. Later on, a six-headed boy was born from that energy. Sage Garg gave the child the name Kartike. The six wives became Kritikas, stars. After he was born, the infant floated on river Ganga and is hence also called Gange. Shiva then brought Kartike to heaven to slay Tarkasur. Kartike the Senapati All the gods were happy at the birth of Kartike. They began to urge Shiva to appoint the young Kartike as the head of their army. Kartike was made the chief of the god's army, Senapati, at a grand ceremony. The gods equipped him with various weapons and special powers. His mother Parvati too gifted him a powerful spear. Kartike and his army set off to eliminate Tarkasur. It was such a magnificent sight. Numerous gods riding their grand chariots and divine carriers and armed with their very own celestial weapons filled up the skies. The army of each god accompanied him. Meanwhile, Brahma had advised Dev Sena, the daughter of the death god, to pray hard to get Kartike as her husband. When Shiva was informed about Devsena's wish, he got Devsena and Kartike married. That is how Kartike got the name Devsena Pati, Devsena's husband. Kartike's warning to Tarkasur. Kartike sitting on his peak of mount and wielding a spear led a huge army of the gods against Tarkasur. The sounds of drums, the valiant war cries of the soldiers and the rattling of armor and weapons reverberated through the battlefield. Before proclaiming war, it was an age-old custom to send word to the enemy to wage war according to moral principles and ethics and also ask for peace. Indra too sent a messenger of peace to Tarkasur. The messenger told Tarkasur, You have wrecked havoc in the world. The lord of the three worlds, Indra, will destroy you now. If you love your life, then make peace with him, or else get ready for a war. Tarak was furious. Out of my kingdom, he thundered. The messenger fled in fear. Tarkasur then went up on the terrace of his palace and gazed into the far-off horizon for any trouble. He heard war cries from a distance. Kartike kills Tarkasur Tarkasur organized a huge army and set off to attack the gods. When he reached the battlefield, he was amazed to see a child leading the gods' army. Demon Tarak immediately knew that it was Shiva's son coming to kill him. He shuddered, but he did not want to show his fear. Ha ha ha! You gods are worthless. Have you no shame in hiding behind the shield of a small child? Demon Tarak jeered. Indra tried to tackle Tarak himself, but Tarak used his own Vajra and threw it at Indra. The king of gods, Indra, fell down unconscious. 
Now there began a spirited fight between both sides. Karthike threw his spear at Tarak and he hit back with his own. Karthike fainted away. What is going to happen now? The Gandharvs who were watching from the skies wondered. But Karthike soon recovered and hurled his spear at Tarak. The spear pierced Tarak's chest and he fell down on the ground with a terrible cry. All the gods rejoiced. There was a great jubilation among them. Kartike, the demon killer. After Tarkasur's slaying, Kartike learnt that three of Tarak's followers, Banasur, Kronch, and Pralam, who had fled after the war, were hounding people around the mountains. Kartike shot arrows from where he was standing and killed them. Now the gods were in high spirits. But among those three demons, Pralam was still alive. The rejuvenated gods eliminated many demons, while some of the demons pleaded mercy and yet others retreated. The delighted gods brought down a rain of flowers. After learning that Kartike had killed Tarak, Shiva and Parvati, reached there and embraced their son. They also blessed him. The women from heaven descended and performed Aarti to ward off evil. The sages chanted religious hymns. There was celestial music too. All men and women praised and worshipped Kartike. He aided the angels in retaining their rightful place. Thereafter, he went back to his abode near Mount Kailash. Pralamb goes to Patan. Demon Pralamb had escaped, being killed in the battle between the gods and the demons and ran away to Patal, the world beneath the earth's surface. When Pralamb reached Patal, he saw that Vasuki, the king of snakes, was away visiting Karthike. Pralam took the opportunity and terrorized smaller snakes that lived in Patal. Ten crore followers of Pralam too went with him and began to trouble the snakes. One day, a snake named Kumud went up to Vasuki and complained about Pralam in the presence of Karthike. Hearing this, Karthike became angry. He left for Patal with his spear. He flung it straight down to Patal and it hit Pralam on his chest. The spear passed through his chest and dug a hole in the grounds of Patal. It then returned to Karthike. Water welled out of the hole it had made. For underneath flowed the river of Patal, Patal Ganga. This well will be known as Siddhaku, declared Karthike. Ganesha and Karthike's sister Ashok Sundri. According to a legend, Parvati once requested Shiva to take her to a beautiful grove named Nandan Kanan. Shiva was surprised but promised to take her there. They soon set off to Nandan Kanan. Parvati was amazed to see many varieties of beautiful trees and flowers growing in the grove. Among them, there was one particular tree that was superior to all. Parvati curiously asked Shiva, Which is this tree and why is it different from others? Parvati, this is Kalpavriksh, the divine tree that grants all wishes, Shiva replied. On hearing this, Parvati beamed with joy. Suddenly a thought came to her mind and she wished to have a daughter. As soon as she expressed her wish, a beautiful girl emerged from the tree. An overjoyed Parvati loved the girl at once and named her Ashok Sundari. Parvati blessed Ashok Sundari and told her that she would have a king named Nahush as her husband. Shiva and Parvati returned to Mount Kailash while Ashok Sundari started living in Nandan Kanan. Ganesha returns Vishnu's conch. 
During his childhood, Ganesha used to play with his father's ganas at Mount Kailash. Ganesha would hide in a flower garden and suck the water from the ocean of milk using his trunk. It is believed that Vishnu rests on the coils of serpent king Sheshnag, who floats on this ocean. Ganesha would then shower the water on the ganas as if it was raining. One day, Vishnu found that his Panchajanya shank, a sacred conch with swirls towards the right, was missing and was upset. He then heard the sound of a conch and understood that it was his shank. It was being blown somewhere near Mount Kailash. Vishnu prayed to Shiva. Shiva appeared before him and said that the shank was indeed in Mount Kailash but with Ganesha. In order to retrieve the shank, Vishnu was asked to pray to Vallampuri Ganesh. Ganesha, in a rare posture, with his trunk turned towards the right. Vishnu organized a ritual in honor of Ganesha. Pleased, Ganesha returned the shank to its rightful owner. Vishnu was overjoyed to have his shank back. Ganesha as Vigneshwar. Once there lived a king in Hemvati called Abhinandan. His ambition was to become the king of heaven. So he started performing a great sacrifice to achieve his goal. When Indra came to know of this, he became scared of losing his throne. He summoned Kal, time and asked him to create obstacles in the sacrifice. Kal assumed the form of demon Vigna, obstacle and destroyed the sacrifice. However, he then went a step further and started destroying all virtuous and good deeds on earth. There was utter chaos everywhere. Brahma advised the frightened gods to worship Ganesha in order to get rid of the demon. Ganesha took birth as sage Parshva's son. He then started fighting against Vignasur. The demon tried to create many illusions, Maya, like cyclone, flood and fire among others. But Ganesha destroyed all of them. Finally, Vignasur surrendered before Ganesha. He also requested his name to be added with Ganesha's name. This is how Ganesha came to be known as Vigneshwar, the destroyer of obstacles. Ganesha as Siddhi Vinayak There are many stories behind how Ganesha got the name Siddhi Vinayak. According to a legend, the universe was created by Brahma with Ganesha's blessings. When Brahma was busy creating the universe, Vishnu, the preserver, dozed off on top of Sheshna. During that sleep, two demons, Madhu and Kaitab, emerged out of Vishnu's ears. Empowered by goddess Mahamaya's blessings, the demons began torturing the gods. Brahma and other gods sought the help of Vishnu. Vishnu fought against the demons for more than 5000 years but could not defeat them. While Vishnu was fighting against them, he prayed to Shiva to show a way to kill these demons. Shiva told him to pray to Ganesha and seek his blessings. Vishnu did as he was told. Pleased, Ganesha blessed Vishnu with powers, Siddhi, to fight against the demons. Vishnu slew the demons with his Sudarshan Chakra. Discuss. The place where Vishnu attained Siddhi is called Siddhatek. Ganesha, who bestowed the Siddhi, came to be known as Siddhi Vinayak. Mushak, the Naughty Mouse Many stories exist about how Ganesha got a mouse, Mushak, as his Vahan, Mount. Here is one story found in the Puranas. Once there lived a huge and powerful mouse named Mushak on earth. Mushak scrambled here and there, nibbling at food and clothes and biting people's feet. It jolted and scared people. There was total destruction all around. Crops were ruined and textiles and 
clothes full of holes. Mushak was making life difficult for everyone. The worried people tried different methods to trap the mouse, but all in vain. Mushak was very shrewd to be trapped. People had no option but to ask for a divine intervention. They started praying to Lord Ganesha. God, a mouse is troubling us. It has destroyed everything. What will we eat and where now? Please find a solution to this menace. They pleaded with Ganesha. They were confident that Ganesha would put an end to their misery. Lord Ganesha rides Mushak. A huge mouse was making people's life miserable on earth. They pleaded with Lord Ganesha to come to their rescue. Lord, we cannot stay here any longer. We will have to move to some other place. They prayed to Ganesha. On hearing this, Ganesha went down to earth to deal with Mushak himself. He pacified the devotees. Do not be anxious. I will do something. Then Lord Ganesha made a plan to trap Mushak. He made a trap, Pasha, with a rope and hurled it at the huge mouse. Mushak's neck was caught in the trap and Ganesha pulled him. You cannot flee from this Pasha, exclaimed Ganesha. Ganesha then sprang over the mouse and sat astride on him as if on a horse. The mouse squeaked and wailed under Ganesha's ample weight. Finally, Ganesha took pity on the mouse and stopped the ride. The Gandharv who became Mushak After trapping Mushak, Ganesha mounted his back. Mushak could not bear Ganesha's weight. On hearing his cries, Ganesha stopped the ride. Mushak then told Ganesha, Please hear my story. I am actually a celestial musician, Gandharv, named Kronch. I have been cursed to become a mouse. When I was a Gandharv, I happened to step on sage Vamdev's toes. Enraged, the sage cursed me to turn into a mouse and scramble on earth. When I begged for mercy, the sage said that though he could not take back the curse, people would always kneel down before me. So Mushak came to earth as a gigantic mouse. Even though many people tried to trap and kill him, they failed to do so as he was not really a mouse. But Ganesha was able to trap Mushak. Ganesha as Mushak Vahan Mushak revealed his true identity to Lord Ganesha. The kind-hearted Ganesha took pity on Mushak and decided to bring an end to his sufferings. With his powers, Ganesha reduced Mushak's huge size to a reasonably small one. Mushak also pleaded with Ganesha to use him as his mount. Please forgive me and take me as your Vahan, my lord. I will take you everywhere you wish to go. He squeaked. Ganesha agreed. He also made himself light enough for the mouse to bear his weight. The mouse was once again a joyous creature. From then on, Mushak became Ganesha's vehicle. As Sage Vamdev had predicted, all who bowed down before Ganesha paid their respects to Mushak as well. He also got to feed on the sweets offered to Ganesha. Since then, Mushak is worshipped along with Ganesha. This is how Ganesha came to be known as Mushak Vahan, one mounted on a mouse. Gajmukhasar becomes Ganesha's mount. There is another interesting story about how Ganesha got a mouse as his vehicle. Once there lived a demon named Gajmukha. He worshipped Shiva fervently. Once, he performed severe penance and attained many wounds from Shiva. But Gajmukhasa did not use them wisely. Instead, he became vain and started tormenting the gods and the sages alike. He used to force them to do 1008 sit-ups each thrice a day. 
fed up, the gods and the sages pleaded with Shiva to save them from Gajmukhasur's antiques. Shiva sent Ganesha to destroy Gajmukhasur. But Ganesha could not destroy the demon as he had attained the womb that he could not be killed by any weapon. Finally, Ganesha broke off his right tusk to pierce the demon. Gajmukhasur rushed towards Ganesha in the form of a mouse, Mushak. Quelling the demon's ego, Ganesha sat on top of Mushak, who could not wear Ganesha's weight. So, the conquered Gajmukhasur apologized to Ganesha, who made him his Vahan. Gods plot against Ganesha. The gods were excited. Lord Vishnu was getting married to Goddess Lakshmi. Heaven was all decked up and preparations were on in full swing. All the gods were invited to the wedding. A day before the wedding, the gods went to meet Vishnu at his abode. Vishnu was puzzled to see them before him. My wedding is tomorrow. Why have you all gathered here? Is there any problem? He asked them. The gods told Vishnu that they were not at ease to take Ganesha along with them for the wedding ceremony. Surprised, Vishnu asked them the reason behind their uneasiness. One of them replied, My lord, Ganesha looks so odd and we are not comfortable when he is around and he eats too much. Why should we take him if he will embarrass you in front of Goddess Lakshmi and her family? Ganesha dropped from Vishnu's wedding. Vishnu was perplexed. He told the gods that he had already invited Ganesha to his wedding and he could not stop him from accompanying them now. But the gods had already hatched a plot. Please tell Ganesha that the demons could seize heaven if they came to know that it is empty. Flatter him about his strength and make him guard heaven while we are away. Vishnu did not want to leave Ganesha behind, but he agreed under the pressure from the gods. He told Ganesha to stay back and guard heaven. Ganesha was hurt. He had earnestly wanted to attend Vishnu's wedding, but he had to sit all alone in heaven. Now, sage Narad, who loved to stir up trouble, came to Ganesha and told him about the plan of the gods. Ganesha flew into a rage. When he realized how the gods had plotted against him, preventing him from attending Vishnu's wedding, he vowed to take revenge. Ganesha the Obstacle Creator Ganesha was extremely angry when he came to know that the gods had conspired against him to prevent him from attending Vishnu's wedding. So he decided to take revenge on them. Ganesha told his mount, Mushak, to dig a hole on the road where the marriage procession was about to pass. The obedient Mushak did as he was told to do. When the wedding procession reached that place, the wheel of Vishnu's carriage plunged into the hole. As the wheel had got stuck in the hole, the wedding group could go no further. All the attendants of Vishnu joined in to pull out the wheel, but it was badly stuck. Though the gods too gave a hand in pulling out the wheel, yet it further sank into the ground. Everybody was quite anxious, as the auspicious time set for the marriage was fast approaching. The bridegroom himself was bewildered. Vishnu wondered who could be so strong and courageous enough to stop his wedding procession? Ganesha the Obstacle Remover the entire marriage procession of Vishnu was trying to pull the stuck wheel of his carriage out of the hole, but it would not budge. A farmer who was passing by saw their struggle and offered to help. The gods were skeptical and some even made fun of him, thinking how a mere farmer could help when Lord Vishnu himself had failed. They all had a discussion and ultimately the farmer was given a chance. Jai Ganesh! Jai Ganesh! He chanted Lord Ganesha's name and heaved out the chariot's wheel. The wheel came out at once. 
As the gods looked surprised, the farmer smiled at them and said, Lord Ganesha is the obstacle remover. Just taking his name removes all problems. Vishnu and the gods realized their mistake. They remembered Ganesha. All of a sudden, Ganesha appeared before them. The gods apologized to him. They learned a big lesson. It is a person's goodness that counts, not his looks. They requested Ganesha to join the wedding procession. So Ganesha happily joined in. Ganesha wears white for coronation. One day, Parvati sat deep in her thoughts. She was thinking about the Pattabhishek coronation ceremony. Suddenly, a thought came to her mind. She decided that her son Ganesha should have a Pattabhishek ceremony. Parvati soon sent out invitations to all the gods and the sages as she wanted to celebrate the ceremony in a magnificent way. Ganesha too would be able to get everybody's blessings. She chose beautiful, colorful clothes for him to wear for the occasion. But to her dismay, Ganesha dressed in white attire on the ceremony day. Ganesha, I had picked up nice and colorful clothes for you to wear. Then why have you worn this white dress? asked Parvati. Mother, the clothes that you chose for me are very nice. It was so thoughtful of you. White signifies simplicity and purity. So I wanted to wear white for this special day, Ganesha told Parvati. Lakshmi sits on Ganesha's lap. The coronation ceremony of Lord Ganesha had all the gods and the sages in attendance. Everybody took turn to bless Ganesha. Lord Vishnu and Goddess Lakshmi were there too. But as soon as they met Ganesha, Lakshmi made haste to leave. Vishnu was upset with Lakshmi's odd behavior. He said, You have not blessed Ganesha yet, Lakshmi. Why are you leaving already? Vishnu then told Ganesha, Ganesha, Lakshmi's hasty temperament dismays me. She is always restless. Please help me to make her calm and steady. Please allow her to sit on your lap. Most blessed will I feel if Mother Lakshmi sits on my lap, answered Ganesha. He encircled Lakshmi with his trunk and made her sit on his lap. The gods and the sages were thrilled to see this beautiful sight. They all cheered for Lakshmi and Ganesha. Jai Lakshmi Ganesha! Jai Lakshmi Ganesha! Moon God laughs at Ganesha. There exist many stories about why Ganesha got very angry with the Moon God Chandra. According to one legend, Indra once organized a sumptuous meal for all the gods and the goddesses at his abode in Indralok. All the invitees started for Indralok mounted on their respective vahans. Meanwhile, Ganesha was finding it difficult to sit on his vahan. Mushak was unable to bear Ganesha's weight and was stumbling. On toppling over again and again, Ganesha asked Mushak, What is happening, Mushak? Mushak silently tried to balance himself. Shiva and Parvati, Brahma and Vishnu all were about to reach Indralok. Here, Mushak was still struggling to carry Ganesha. The moon god was looking down at Mushak's futile efforts. He found this sight funny. He started laughing. Ha ha ha! Kartike looks magnificent on his peacock. And look at you, Ganesha. The moon god started mocking at Ganesha. Ganesha took this as an insult and was very angry with the moon god. Ganesha's annoyance with Moon God There is yet another popular legend related to Ganesha's anger with the Moon God. One day Shiva had a visitor. It was none other than Brahma. They both were discussing something important when sage Narad walked in. As Narad was offering a wonderful fruit to Shiva, Ganesha and Kartike reached there. 
They saw the fruit and soon both wanted to eat it. They pleaded with Shiva to give it to them. But Narad told Shiva, This fruit cannot be divided as it is a special one. Shiva was quite confused. He then turned to Brahma for a solution. Give it to Kartike, the elder one, advised Lord Brahma. Shiva agreed with Brahma and gave the divine fruit to Kartike. Brahma's decision made the otherwise merry and mischievous Ganesha terribly hurt and resentful. The moon god who had witnessed the whole incident burst out laughing. He was very amused at Ganesha's jealousy. Ganesha was already in a foul mood and got very annoyed with the moon god. Ganesha curses moon god. Ganesha was being mocked at by the moon god constantly. This enraged him further. Ultimately, it was too much to bear and Ganesha lost his patience. You are laughing at me. Since you have insulted me so much, let us see how you will shine from now on, yelled Ganesha in fury. Controlling his laughter with difficulty, the moon god fell silent. Ganesha was still angry with the moon god, so he cursed Chandra. O Chandra, you shall lose your luster and shine. Those who gaze at you will be cursed too. Instantly, the entire world became dark and morose. Chandra realized his mistake and begged for forgiveness. I was so haughty, Lord. Please give mercy on me. The gods who were watching this took pity on Chandra. They requested Ganesha to forgive him. On being besought, many times Ganesha relented and said he would change a part of the curse. Ganesha forgives Moon God. The other gods pleaded with Ganesha to forgive the Moon God for laughing at him. The kind-hearted Ganesha could not take back his curse completely. So he softened the curse a bit. You shall lose your brilliance for 15 days and regain it in the next 15 days. You shall continue to wax and wane like this forever. Ganesha told Chandra, you shall remain inauspicious on the fourth day of the month of Bhadrapad Shukla. He added, Chandra was advised by the gods to pray to Ganesha to win his forgiveness completely. So Chandra worshipped Ganesha with utmost devotion on the banks of river Janvi. Ganesha was pleased with Chandra's devotion and told him that he would get back his luster and shine. Those who observe fast, on the fourth day of each month, Krishna Paksh will have to worship both of us. You will also be worshipped by people on the second day of every month, he added. Since then, people started worshipping Chandra too. Ganesha is annoyed with moon. There is yet another story related to Ganesha's annoyance with the moon god. On one of his birthdays, he went to visit his devotee's house on Mushik's back as usual. Since he was very fond of sweets, he ended up eating all the sweets served by his devotees. Ganesha decided to return home. On the way, Mushik spotted a serpent and lost its balance. Due to this, Ganesha lost balance and fell down. His huge belly split open and the sweets spilled out. Ganesha immediately stuffed the sweets back into his belly. Then he tied the serpent around his belly and sat back on his mouse. The moon god who was watching this incident from the sky started laughing out aloud. Ganesha felt severely insulted and cursed the moon god. Chandra, no one shall dare to look at you on my birthday. It will bring them bad luck. Though Ganesha later pardoned the moon god, people still avoid looking at the moon on Ganesh Chaturthi.
Ganesha gets Parvati's special sweets. One day Parvati made some sweet rice cakes. When Kartike saw this, he asked for some. Parvati smiled and said, "Son, these sweet rice cakes are special. They have great holy power hidden in them. Only those who are worthy will get these cakes." Kartike asked, "What are those holy powers, mother?" Parvati said, "Son, mere inhalation of the aroma of these rice cakes imparts immortality. The person who eats these sweet rice cakes shall get immense powers. I have decided to serve these rice cakes to the one who is most worthy and deserving." Kartike thought of proving himself worthy in front of his mother and left for a journey across the universe. He decided to visit all the pilgrimages and attain blessings from all those places. Meanwhile, Ganesha who was listening to his mother and brother's conversation decided to worship his parents. Shiva and Parvati were pleased with Ganesha's thoughts and gifted him the rice cakes. Marriage test for Ganesha and Kartike. Time passed. Kartike and Ganesha grew up. Shiva and Parvati decided to get them married. But they found it difficult to decide who should marry first. Both the sons were equally dear to them. Finally, they approached their sons to ask their opinion on the matter. Unfortunately, Ganesha and Kartike had a terrible argument. I am elder and good looking. So naturally, I should get married first, said Kartike. Ganesha did not like his brother's reasoning and shook his head. He said, "Brother, being good looking is no criterion for becoming a bridegroom, but being wiser is. I am wiser than you, so I am a better choice for any bride." When Shiva realized that his sons were unable to propose a solution to the confusion, he announced that the two would compete on a challenge. Kartike and Ganesha, here is the challenge. You have to go around the universe thrice. Whoever returns first can marry first. Kartike was happy as he knew he could outrace Ganesha. Little Ganesha learns a lesson. Both Kartike and Ganesha agreed to Shiva's challenge. Soon the race started. Kartike rode his mount, the peacock, and immediately set off for the journey. Ganesha thought, "My mount is smaller and will not be able to match the speed of Kartike's peacock. This way, I may end up losing. So I have to think of another way." Suddenly, an idea struck Ganesha. He smiled with confidence. He remembered an incident from his childhood. As a child, Ganesha had once beaten a cat who was trying to hunt his mouse. He threw the cat so harshly on a rock that it got severely bruised. After doing so, Ganesha returned home. There he saw that his mother was severely hurt and was applying turmeric paste on her bruises. He ran towards her and asked her how she got hurt. To this Parvati answered, "Ganesha, you are responsible for these bruises. I was that cat." She added, "Son, I am present in every creature. I am the mother of all the creatures and I experience their pain and hurt equally." The quick thinking Ganesha. Ganesha learned an important lesson from his mother. He learned that God lives in the soul of every creature and one should not hurt any living thing. From this lesson, he also found a solution to the problem he was currently facing, the race between him and Kartike. He went straight to Mount Kailash and stood in front of his parents. Parvati exclaimed, "You are still here, Ganesha?" Are you not participating in the race or have you accepted your defeat? Ganesha knew how to answer the queries of his mother. 
He was also aware that Karthike might have covered a long distance by that time, but he was calm. Ganesha immediately bowed down before his parents and touched their feet. After getting their blessings, he then walked around his parents thrice. Shiva and Parvati could see what Ganesha was up to. They were pleased that Ganesha had a wise approach towards difficult situations. Ganesha wins the race. Kartike completed the challenge of circling around the world three times and returned to Mount Kailash. He was sure that he had beaten Ganesha in the race. But much to his amazement, he saw that Ganesha was already there and Mother Parvati was hugging him. He ran towards his parents and asked Ganesha, How did you circle the world three times and came back so quickly? Your mount is so small and weak as compared to my peacock. Ganesha smiled calmly. He explained everything to Karthike. He narrated how he recalled an incident that had happened in his childhood. He added that he had then discovered their mother was present everywhere and she was the symbol of the entire universe. So instead of circling the entire universe, I took rounds around the place where mother and father were sitting. For me, they are my world. Ganesha concluded. Shiva and Parvati were happy with Ganesha's wise thoughts and declared him the winner of the race. Kartike leaves for Mount Crunch. Ganesha had won the competition by using his wisdom and intelligence. Parvati said, Ganesha will marry first as per the rules of the competition. Kartike was upset with this decision. He expressed his displeasure before his parents and Ganesha. I was the one who actually circled around the universe on my peacock and put in a lot of effort. But Ganesha did not even move from Mount Kailash. This is not fair. I do not accept it, he said scornfully. But Shiva and Parvati were firm on their decision. Stop arguing, Kartike. We know that you were the one who physically went across the entire universe. But Ganesha is the deserving one, as he took a wise step to deal with the situation. You used your speed, while he used his brains. Kartike was unhappy with his parents' decision. He felt that his parents were partial towards Ganesha. So he decided to leave Mount Kailash and headed towards Mount Crunch. Ganesha marries against his will. There are many legends related to Ganesha's marriage. According to one legend, Ganesha had told his parents that in spite of winning the race and the decision that he could marry first, he did not want to get married. He was happy eating sweet rice cakes and playing with his mouse. On the other hand, there was a girl named Tulsi who lived in Gokul. She had always worshipped Ganesha and wanted to marry him. But Ganesha showed his disinterest in the proposal. One day, Ganesha was in deep meditation. At that time, Tulsi approached him and tried to disturb him. Ganesha was not happy to lose his concentration. He was extremely angry with Tulsi. So he cursed her and said, Go away. You shall marry a demon, not me. Tulsi felt insulted. So she too cursed Ganesha. You do not want to marry me? That is fine. But soon you shall get married against your wishes and you shall not be able to meditate. Soon Ganesha got married to a girl named Pushti. Fulfillment Ganesha marries Riddhi and Siddhi. Another legend has it that Ganesha was unable to find a suitable match because of his elephant's head. He felt irritated and thought of hindering other gods' marriages. So he instructed his mouse friends to travel across heaven and dig up deep holes on the paths 
through which the marriage procession of any god could pass. These souls created havoc across heaven. The gods were worried and their families faced difficulties. All the gods then decided to visit Lord Brahma and ask for a solution. Brahma created two beautiful girls. One was Riddhi, wealth, and the other was Siddhi, intelligence. Brahma got Ganesha married to both of them. Ganesha calmed down and then he never created any hurdle in any marriage procession. Ganesha had two sons, Shubh, auspicious, and Lam, prophet, and a daughter named Santoshi, satisfaction or contentment. Another legend states that Riddhi and Siddhi were the twin daughters of King Prajapati and Ganesha married them after winning a race. Ganesha helps Kartike marry Valli. Ganesha loved his brother Kartike a lot. He helped Kartike whenever he faced any difficulty in life. Legend says that Kartike married twice in his lifetime. The first marriage was with a girl named Devsena, the daughter of the god of death. Ganesha helped Kartike marry a tribal girl named Valli. She admired Kartike for his bravery and heroism. She wanted to marry Kartike. He liked her too. Once Kartike planned to meet Valli. He disguised himself as a bangle seller and visited Valli's house. Valli at once recognized him and started talking to him. But Valli's brothers did not let the two talk with each other. Later, Kartike and Valli went to Ganesha for help. Ganesha converted himself into a wild elephant and pretended to attack Valli. As per the plan, Kartike saved Valli from the elephant. When Valli told her brothers about Kartike's bravery, they willingly got her married to him. Sage Parshuram Sage Parshuram was the sixth incarnation of Vishnu. The great sage Jamagni and Renuka were Parshuram's parents. Though Parshuram was a Brahmin, yet he was trained to be a warrior. He was famous for his short temper. He had cursed several people just because they had annoyed him. Parshuram was a great disciple of Shiva. He once pleased Shiva through his prayers and deep meditation. Shiva blessed him with a divine axe. The axe had immense powers. Parshuram was proud of his axe and always kept it with him. The incarnation of Vishnu as Parshuram had a great motive behind it. Vishnu observed that the Kshatriya rulers on earth were creating havoc and were troubling people. So, to bring back things on the right path, Vishnu took birth on earth as Parshuram. It is believed that he went round the earth 21 times and destroyed all the Kshatriyas. Ganesha stops Parshuram. Parshuram was an ardent devotee of Lord Shiva. He once decided to meet Shiva. He thought he could visit him at any time he wished. Parshuram reached Mount Kailash and found two boys guarding the entrance. These two boys were Kartike and Ganesha. Their parents had instructed them to guard the entrance so that no one might disturb them. Parshuram asked Kartike and Ganesha to let him meet Shiva. Ganesha said, O respected saint, you will have to wait for some time. Our parents are resting and we are not supposed to let anyone go inside. But Parshuram was not ready to understand Ganesha's explanation. He was getting restless and showed anxiety to meet Shiva. Ganesha and Kartike did not like the way Parshuram was behaving. But since he was older, Kartike and Ganesha did not want to insult him. So they politely continued to stop the sage from meeting Shiva. Parshuram, who was a short-tempered person, 
took it as an insult and became furious. Ganesha is called Ekadanta. Parshuram had no patience. Soon a tussle started between him and Ganesha. Kartike tried to stop the fight between them, but neither of them would budge. Parshuram used his axe to assault Ganesha, but Ganesha averted the attack. Parshuram continued the attack, whereas Ganesha refused to step back. Finally, Parshuram hit at Ganesha's tusk with the divine axe. Ganesha let Parshuram strike him, as he was aware that Parshuram's axe was a gift from his father to the sage. The axe broke his left tusk. Ganesha let out a yell. Mother Parvati rushed out to her son. She saw Ganesha suffering and was very angry with Parshuram. Shiva too joined them. Shiva tried to placate Parvati. Parshuram pleaded for forgiveness and prayed to Ganesha. Ganesha forgave Parshuram. From now on, you shall be known by the name of Ekadant with one tooth. Your broken tusk will be used in writing the great epic Mahabharat. Parshuram blessed Ganesha. Ganesha swallows Sudarshan Chakra. Once Vishnu had to meet Shiva urgently. On reaching Mount Kailash, he placed his divine wheel Sudarshan Chakra at a safe place and went in to meet Shiva. After meeting Shiva, Vishnu came out to take his Sudarshan Chakra, but to his dismay, it was not there. He searched high and low for his chakra, but couldn't find it anywhere in Mount Kailash. Then, using his celestial powers, Vishnu was able to see that the chakra had been swallowed by Ganesha. In order to get back his chakra, Vishnu began praying to Ganesha, but Ganesha could not be pleased easily. So Vishnu pulled on his ear lobes with his arms crossed and started bending down and then getting up. When Ganesha saw Vishnu in this posture, he could not control his laughter and out flew the chakra from his stomach into Vishnu's hands. Since then, the act of bending down and stretching back while holding the ear lobes with crossed hands became a mode of worshipping Ganesha. The Coconut Cracking Ganesha This is a story about how Lord Ganesha became so fond of cracking coconuts. Once, Shiva and Parvati had a bitter argument. Enraged, Shiva slashed off their son Ganesha's head. Immediately, he was remorseful for what he had done. Shiva knew how angry Parvati was when he had cut off Ganesha's head earlier in a fit of fury. Fearing Parvati's wrath, Shiva instantly fixed Ganesha's head back onto his body with the chanting of shlokas and showering of Ganga's water. Ganesha came back to life. After his rebirth, Ganesha vowed to cut off the head of Shiva, who had beheaded him twice. This made the entire heaven shudder. The bewildered gods kept on looking for a solution. Suddenly, an idea occurred to one of them. They got a coconut that had three marks in it. The marks looked like the three eyes of Shiva. They offered it to Ganesha. Ganesha broke apart the coconut. This symbolic killing of Lord Shiva calmed down the adamant Ganesha. Proud Kuber Kuber, the god of wealth, was very proud of his endless wealth. Bragging about his abundant riches and grandeur, he once invited Shiva and Parvati to his palace to share a meal. He thought they would be impressed by the sight of his splendor and wealth. Shiva and Parvati had a prior commitment, so they had to decline Kuber's invitation. When Kuber insisted again and again, Shiva told him they would send their son Ganesha for the meal. 
Kabir was glad to hear that Ganesha would be his guest. I would love to play host to your son, my lord. I have riches enough to entertain hundreds of youths like Ganesha, said Kubir. Ganesha could comprehend that Kubir wanted to boast about his lavish living. He thought of teaching the haughty Kubir a much needed lesson. Ganesha and Kubir Ganesha arrived at Kubir's palace at the stipulated time. He got a stupendous welcome when he arrived at Kubir's palatial abode. Kubir took Ganesha around his grand palace. Ganesha was quite tired and hungry after a while. So Kubir's attendants laid out a sumptuous and a magnificent meal consisting of numerous delicacies. Ganesha was requested to begin the meal. It took him just a few seconds to consume all the dishes laid out before him. He was served more food by Kubir's attendants. But that too was eaten in no time. Yet again, he asked for more food. Kubir was shocked to see how much Ganesha could eat. Ganesha behaved absolutely normal after eating all that food. The poor attendants got more and more food for Ganesha. Now, there was nothing left for Ganesha to eat. All of Kubir's wealth could not really fill up Ganesha's stomach. Ganesha's Appetite Ganesha was still hungry. He had eaten all that Kubir's attendants had laid out for him. Yet he kept asking for more and more food. Kubir was worried. My lord, there is nothing I can give you to eat now. I have already offered all I had, he said. Ganesha was displeased. Why did you keep this feast for me then? You are not able to entertain a youth well. Get me something quickly or else I will gobble you up, he said. Seeing this, Ganesha went on a destructive spree. He ate up all he could lay his hands on. Plates, furniture and Kubir city, Alkapuri as well. In fact, Mushak too began pulling down the city and digging holes everywhere. The inhabitants of Alkapuri ran helter-skelter to save themselves and took shelter in Kubir's palace. Kubir realizes his mistake. Kubir rushed back to Mount Kailash. He told the whole story to Shiva. Please help me, protect me from Ganesha's fury. What should I do to satisfy his hunger? cried Kubir. Don't worry Kubir, Ganesha is just teaching you a lesson in humility. You were too proud of your riches. False pride always does one harm said Shiva. Kubir understood his mistake. He begged forgiveness and apologized for being blinded by the fake luster of his riches. Shiva then advised Kubir to offer Ganesha a bowl of sweet rice cakes to satiate him. Kubir rushed back home with the bowl of sweet rice cakes and presented it to Ganesha. Ganesha was happy and content after finishing up the rice cakes. Kubir fell at Ganesha's feet and begged for mercy. I could not understand your greatness, my lord. My pride is gone now, he said. Ganesha accepted Kubir's apology and blessed him. Ravan, Shiva's Avid Devotee Ravan was the demon king of Lanka. He was an avid devotee of Lord Shiva and a great scholar too. His aim was to become the most powerful demon on earth. For that, he desired to acquire Shiva's lingam. So he undertook severe penance to get the lingam from Shiva. Ravan had earlier been granted a boon by Brahma that his heads and arms could never be destroyed. So he offered his heads one by one daily to Shiva. To appease Shiva, Ravan also did severe penance on Mount Kailash. 
and prayed to him day and night without food or water. Shiva was delighted with Ravan's devotion and appeared before him. I am very pleased with your prayers. Ask for anything you desire, he said. Ravan asked for Shiva's lingam. He said he wanted his blessings so that he might become the most important and strong demon on earth. Ravan gets the Shivlingam. Shiva was pleased with Ravan's dedication and presented him the lingam, but on certain conditions. Shiva told Ravan that he would have to return to his city on foot and that he could not put the Shivlingam down anywhere at all. If he placed it on the ground, it would get stuck there. Then he would not be able to take it with him. Ravan was thrilled and agreed to all the conditions. He accepted the Shivlingam and started on his way back to Lanka. The gods were worried. Ravan, who was already dangerous, would gain a lot of power and become invincible if he was able to reach Lanka with the Shivlingam. They rushed to Ganesh and said, Lord, we are very scared. Ravan will become the most powerful being on earth if he succeeds in placing the Shivlingam in Lanka. The power he attains will be put to some evil use and he will destroy the whole universe. Ravan gives Shivlingam to Ganesha. Ravan was on his way back to Lanka with the Shivlingam. Soon he reached a forest. It was early morning and Ravan thought of taking his bath and performing his prayers. But he could not keep the Shivlingam on the ground. So he decided to find a suitable person who could hold it for a while. On Mount Kailash, all the gods were requesting Ganesha to save the Shivlingam from reaching Lanka. Ganesha assured them that he would definitely solve the problem. Ganesha followed Ravan and reached the forest. He understood that Ravan was searching for someone to hold the Shivlingam. Ganesha transformed into a young boy and reached the place where Ravan was standing. Ravan saw the boy and immediately asked him for help. He said, Boy, you look like a wise fellow. Can you hold the Shivlingam for some time? The young boy agreed and held the Shivlingam carefully. He assured Ravan that he would take care of it. Ravan asked him not to keep the Shivlingam on the ground at all and went away to take his bath and perform his prayers. Ravan loses Shivlingam. Ravan was performing his prayers with deep concentration. Suddenly, he heard the boy shouting, Oh, this Shivlingam is too heavy. My hands are aching. I have to drop it here. Ravan was puzzled. He was unable to leave his prayers in between, so he shouted back, Please hold it for some more time. Let me complete my prayers. Ganesha knew. It was the right opportunity to place the Shivlingam on the ground. So he kept it on the ground and disappeared. When Ravan came back, he found that the boy was missing and the Shivlingam was stuck to the ground. He tried his best to pull out the Shivlingam, but was unable to do so. He lost all hope and left for Lamka. Thus, Ganesha stopped Ravan from getting the divine Shivlingam and becoming invincible. The place where this incident took place is popular by the name of Mahabaleshwar in Southwest India. Talasur warns Amravati. Once there lived a cruel demon named Tala on earth. He was immensely powerful. He defeated all kings and started ruling their kingdoms. People on earth trembled with fear just at the mention of his name. Talasur wanted to rule Amravati too. Amravati was the abode of the gods. When 
सेज शुक्राचार्य द प्रोसेप्टर और गुरु ऑफ द डीमन हर्ड अबाउट ताला सर इंटेंशन ही वेंट टू मीट हिम ही सेड ताला सर अमरावती कैन नॉट बी कॉन कर्ड यू शुड ड्रॉप द आइडिया ऑफ अटैकिंग इट ताला सर डिड नॉट लाइक वट शुक्राचार्य सेड ही रोड I am determined to do so. You just tell me what I should do to become victorious. I trust that you will devise a way through which I will be able to rule Amravati. Shukracharya thought for a moment and then suggested, Talasur, if you succeed in getting a boon of immortality from Brahma, then you may be able to conquer Amravati. Start worshipping Brahma. Talasur pleases Brahma as suggested by sage Shukracharya Talasur started worshiping Brahma he prayed with utmost dedication he performed penance without having food or water Brahma was happy to see his devotion he appeared before Talasur and offered him a boon of his choice Talasur was happy as his goal was achieved he said lord Please grant me the boon of invincibility Brahma said Son I am sorry I cannot grant your wish as it is against nature's rule Ask for something else Talasur acted smart and said My lord then grant me a boon that no living creature except an elephant could kill me Brahma granted the boon and disappeared Talasur became more powerful He gathered a huge army and marched towards Amravati. Due to the power of his boon, no god could defeat him. Talasur's haughtiness reached its peak. God seek Ganesha's help. Talasur had become overconfident. He was sure that none could kill him. Soon he conquered Amravati. He imprisoned several gods while some succeeded in fleeing. Talasur became like a dictator. With his cruelty increasing day by day, the gods decided to visit Brahma. As they knew, he had given the boon of power to Talasur. Brahma was very disappointed to find out that Talasur had conquered Amravati and was torturing every living creature. He felt very bad when he realized that it all happened. because of his boon he said indra only an elephant can kill talasur according to the boon i suggest you all to approach ganesha he can easily defeat the demon as he has the head of an elephant the gods then went to ganesha and explained their misery they requested him to kill talasur ganesha assured them that he would definitely kill the demon and left for amravati Ganesha humbles Talasur. Ganesha reached Amravati and challenged Talasur for a fight. Talasur under the sense of superiority accepted the challenge. He even mocked how such a small fat creature could fight against him. He thought he would easily defeat Ganesha, but as the fight progressed, Ganesha seemed to overpower Talasur. He caught the demon in his trunk and smashed him on the ground. Talasur became unconscious. When Talasur came back to his senses, he realized that Ganesha had an elephant head. He thought, "I won't be able to defeat Ganesha, so I had better surrender and save my life." He immediately fell at Ganesha's feet and asked for forgiveness. He admitted that he had used his powers for destruction and he was repenting for that. Ganesha decided to forgive Talasur. but kept certain conditions before him he ordered talasur you should at once leave amravati and spend your life peacefully in the nether world finally talasur left amravati and the gods got their abode back the terror of analasur yamraj the god of death 
ruled the city named Yam. He was fond of dance and music. Once he held a grand event of music and dance. He invited several kings. A beautiful dancer named Tilottama caught Yamraj's attention. Soon Tilottama gave birth to a child. The child grew up to become a ferocious demon named Anala. His voice had the power to twitch or while his eyes could emit fire. He created havoc around the world. People used to run for their lives on seeing him. He conquered all the three worlds quite easily. The entire universe was terrorized by him. The gods were not spared either. There was terror all around. Indra tried to defeat Anala sir several times but in vain. The worried gods approached Vishnu for help. Vishnu said, "Only Ganesha can help us in this case. So let us worship him." Ganesha swallows Anala sir. The terrified gods started worshiping Ganesha. They prayed with utmost dedication. They knew if Vishnu had said that Ganesha could help them, then it must be true. They wanted to get rid of Anala sir anyhow. Ganesha heard their prayers and appeared before them. He listened to all their woes and said, "All right, I shall help you all. Do not worry." Ganesha then transformed himself into a small boy and headed towards Anala sir's abode. The demon approached Ganesha slowly. while his eyes emitted fire the surroundings around ganesha were reduced into ashes within seconds ganesha stood bravely in front of anala sir the demon on seeing ganesha started laughing loudly he said so this small creature is going to fight against me and defend the gods let us see anala sir started shooting fireballs at ganesha but he stood unscathed A surprised Anala sir then opened his mouth wide enough to swallow Ganesha. Ganesha showed his huge avatar and in turn gulped Anala sir at one go. This was the end of the fire demon Anala. The delighted gods rained flowers down on Ganesha. Ganesha's fury sunk. Ganesha had swallowed the fire demon Anala. Unfortunately, the demon started troubling his stomach. Ganesha felt like his stomach was on fire. He was unable to lie down or remain still. He shouted in pain, "Oh my stomach, help me! It is burning!" Ganesha rolled on the ground in immense pain. Tears rolled down his eyes in suffering. He was unable to bear the burning sensation. The gods panicked to see Ganesha in pain. We must put out the fire quickly, or else he will die. Some poured cold water on his stomach. A few brought icy cold water for him to drink. Moon said, "I have a cool nature. Let me soothe him." But nothing worked. Someone called the water god Varun. He poured the cool Ganga water on Ganesha's stomach. But Ganesha's suffering continued. Ganesha as Bal Chandra and Padmapan. The gods were worried about Ganesha's fiery stomach. Some even brought chunks of ice from the peaks of Mount Kailash. But Ganesha was not relieved. A huge hula balloon took place in heaven. A few goddesses also came forward to help. They brought milk, curd, sandalwood powder paste, cool clay, and even turmeric. But nothing helped. Some goddesses. Tried flower extracts as a remedy for the burning. Legend has it that Indra brought the crescent moon and placed it on Ganesha's stomach, thus giving him the name Bal Chandra. Vishnu also came to visit Ganesha and placed his lotus on Ganesha's stomach, but the suffering did not subside. Ganesha is known as Padmapani after this instance. One of the legend says that at this moment. Brahma got his two daughters Riddhi and Siddhi married to Ganesha to cool him down but nothing made a difference 
to Ganesha's burning stomach. Durvagras cures Ganesha. A worried Shiva came forward to help his son. He pulled out his divine serpent and placed it over Ganesha's stomach. The holy powers of the serpent also didn't relieve Ganesha from the pain. Everyone was concerned now. The gods then called upon all the sages from the universe. In a short while, 80,000 sages came there. When they saw Ganesha suffering from the burning sensation and acting restless, they placed exactly 21 shoots of Durva plant and chanted sacred mantras. Immediately, the burning sensation stopped. Ganesha's body became cool and felt relaxed. Now I feel much better. Thank you so much, wise sages, he said with a smile. Ganesha then declared that anyone who offered him Durva grass would be blessed. Those who offer Durva shoots to me shall attain purity and all their sins shall be forgiven. Even if a devotee does not offer me flowers, I would bless him if he offers me Durva grass, he said. So no ritual for Ganesha is considered complete if Durva grass is not offered to him. The Brahmin's Curse King Sulab was the ruler of the island Jambudvi. He and his wife Subhadra worshipped Ganesha devotedly. Once a poor Brahmin arrived at King Sulab's palace and begged the king to give him something to eat. But the king turned down the hungry and needy Brahmin's request. He further asked the Brahmin to look for a job as he seemed capable of earning his own living. The humiliated Brahmin got very angry and cursed King Sulab. You have failed to fulfill the responsibilities of a king. May you be born as an ox. The queen was furious to hear the Brahmin curse her husband. So she cursed him back. You senseless Brahmin, may you be born as a donkey. Now the Brahmin turned his fury at the queen and cursed her too. May you be born as a beggar, he shouted. Thus the king, the queen and the Brahmin were reborn as an ox, a beggar and a donkey respectively. The Glory of Durvagras The ox, the donkey and the beggar woman wandered around many places and finally came to a temple built in the name of Lord Ganesha. On the day of Ganesh Chaturthi, the beggar woman who had a pile of Durva grass with her happened to sit beside the temple. There came the donkey and the ox and they started nibbling at the Durva grass. The woman sprang up and tried to chase them away. But both the animals ran away with some grass in their mouths towards the temple. In this to and fro chase, some leaves fell from the animals' mouths on to Lord Ganesha's statue. The beggar woman was still running around Ganesha's statue, trying to show away the ox and the donkey. Ganesha accepted the fallen Durva grass as an offering in prayer and the encircling beggar woman as circumambulation. He blessed the three and freed them from their curse. King Janak and Lord Ganesha Once, Sage Narad visited King Janak, who was famous for his wisdom. Looking at his prosperity, Narad told Janak, It seems like Lord Ganesha has blessed you with a flourishing and peaceful life. King Janak didn't think so and gave his honest opinion to Narad. He said, Oh Sage, I don't believe that. It cannot be the blessings of Ganesha. Narad was quite dismayed. When Ganesha learnt about this, he went to Janak in the guise of an old Brahmin. But the wise Janak immediately realized that the old Brahmin standing in front of him was actually someone divine. The old Brahmin asked for something to eat as he was hungry. King Janak organized a lavish meal for the Brahmin. But the whole food in the palace could not satiate the Brahmin's appetite. He went on eating everything that came his way and still asked for more. 
You promised to feed me. I am still very hungry. Bring me more food," he said. King Janak felt embarrassed when he failed to satisfy the Brahmin's hunger. The Brahmin said to him, "If you cannot even give me food for a day, why do you call yourself a king?" Durvagras and Lord Ganesha. After teaching a lesson in humility to King Janak, Ganesha went to the town of Mithila. There lived a poverty-stricken Brahmin named Trishiras in Mithila. In the guise of a poor Brahmin, Lord Ganesha decided to visit him. He was extended a warm welcome by Trishiras and his wife. Ganesha, as a poor Brahmin, told Trishiras that he was very tired and hungry. and urgently needed some food to eat trishira told ganesha that they were very poor and all they could offer him was some durva grass ganesha happily accepted the grass ganesha then came to his true form in front of trishira and his wife the poor old couple had tears streaming down their eyes on seeing lord ganesha anyone who presents me even one blade of durva grass with sincerity Shall always have my blessings," Ganesha said. Demon Durasad. Long, long ago, there lived a demon called Durasad. He ruled over a country called Mukund. He was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. To attain immortality, he prayed devotedly to Shiva. Shiva was appeased and granted him a boon. He told Durasad, "I am indeed." Impressed by your worship and dedication, may you have supreme powers. May you rule over the entire universe and never be killed by anyone except my son Ganesha. On gaining these extraordinary powers, Durasad became haughty. He began to misuse his powers. He started ruining and destroying heaven and earth. He killed innumerable innocent people. He destroyed several pious and religious places. The gods too looked on helplessly. The entire world trembled with fear. Everybody besought Brahma, who told them that Durasad had become so powerful because of Shiva's boon. Ganesha was the only one who could save them from Durasad's wrath. Ganesha turns Durasad into a statue. The gods decided to take Lord Ganesha's help to deal with Durasad. So they went to Mount Kailash and explained him the situation. Help us, O Lord! You are our only hope against Durasad. You alone can destroy him. They said. Ganesha promised them that he would kill the evil demon. Ganesha then went to Mukund. He challenged Durasad for a fight. Durasad accepted the challenge. A violent fight ensued. Durasad fought with Ganesha using all his powers to defeat him, but all his weapons and powers were of no use. Ganesha could not be defeated. Soon Durasad understood that the invincible one he was fighting against was Lord Ganesha himself. But by this time Ganesha hit him with his mace. Durasad instantly became a statue. The inhabitants of heaven and earth were delighted to be free of the demon's wickedness. Bhasma sir and Durasad. There is another story associated with Durasad. Once Lord Shiva had blessed a demon named Bhasma that anyone touched by Bhasma sir on the head would be reduced to ashes. Armed with such magical power. Bhasma sir decided to test the boon on Shiva himself. Seeing this, Shiva started running to save his life. Ultimately, Lord Vishnu destroyed the demon. Durasad was Bhasma sir's son. He did what his father did, appeasing Shiva with deep penance. Shiva had granted Durasad the boon of immortality and absolute power over the three worlds. Trilok, proud of his strength. Durasad started terrorizing the whole universe. Sage Narad wanted to destroy Durasad for his wicked ways and thought of a plan. He mocked Durasad by saying 
that he could not be called the ruler of Trilok unless he was the ruler of Kashi. As Kashi belonged to Shiva, Durasat could not take it over. Dhundiraj Ganesha When Durasat heard that he could not rule over Kashi, he instantly hurried to attack Kashi. An anxious Narad reached Mount Kailash and narrated the whole incident to Parvati. Parvati was advised to give birth to a child who would then defeat Durasat as he had a boon from Shiva that nobody but Shiva's son could kill Durasat. Narad also told Parvati to chant the mantra Om sincerely and soulfully. Parvati did as she was told and an infant with four arms and a trunk was born. Parvati named the child Ganesha and asked him to kill the demon Durasad. Mounting the lion given by Parvati, Ganesha went to Kashi to defeat Durasad. As Durasad had received the boon of immortality from Shiva, Ganesha struck him down to the ground. It is believed Shiva built Ganesha's shrine on the spot where Durasad was buried. The Ganesha's idol established in this temple is called Dundiraj Ganesha. Vedvyas needs a writer. Ganesha was not only a savior but a great writer too. He assisted sage Vedvyas in writing the great epic Mahabharat. Vyas was a great poet. He had split the Vedas into four parts. The Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Sam Veda and the Atharva Veda. After splitting the Vedas, Vyas decided to write the Mahabharat which describes the great war fought between the Pandavas and the Kauravas who came from the same family. There were many characters and different stories attached to the Mahabharat. Sage Vyas wanted to describe each and every detail and also how Lord Krishna preached the lesson of the Gita to Arjun. But for this, Vyas needed someone who could assist him in executing such an extensive work. He wanted a person who was patient as well as wise enough to carry out the task without any break. Overall, he wanted a diligent writer. Ganesha is reluctant to write. Sage Vyas was unable to decide whom he should approach and ask to become his writer. He thought, I should approach Lord Brahma and express my confusion. I think he would be able to suggest me a suitable person. Lord Brahma patiently heard Sage Vyas's request. Don't worry Vyas, I have someone idle in my mind. Let me talk to him, said Brahma. He then worshipped Lord Ganesha. When Ganesha appeared, he put forth the sage's request to him. Ganesha went to meet Sage Vyas in his ashram. Vyas wanted him to write the Mahabharat. He said, O mighty Ganesha, I want to write down the couplets of the Mahabharat. But my main problem is that I cannot think and write simultaneously. I would be grateful if you join me in creating this epic. But Ganesha was hesitant in accepting the proposal. He said, Respected Sage, I am very busy visiting my devotees and solving their problems. So I am sorry I would not be able to assist you. Ganesha agrees to write Mahabharat. Finally, Vyas succeeded in convincing Ganesha to write down the couplets of the Mahabharat for him. But Ganesha put forth a condition before starting the work. Sage, I want you to narrate the couplets at one go, which means I do not want any interruption while writing. If you stop your narration in between, I will quit at once. Vyas was worried. He started thinking of a solution to the condition laid by Ganesha. He thought, how can I dictate non-stop? It is impossible to speak continuously without pausing. It is difficult to narrate the right words and phrases without a break. So Vyas laid down a counter condition. He said, Lord, 
I agree not to pause while I dictate, but promise me that you will write down only after understanding the meaning of what I say. Ganesha said, "Do not worry. I will write down the couplets only after understanding them. But while doing so, if I take some pauses, those pauses will not be counted." Sage Vyas agreed happily. Vyas dictates Mahabharat. The moment Ganesha agreed to write down the epic Mahabharat, Vyas started framing the couplets in his mind. He framed complex couplets so that Ganesha might take long pauses. Those pauses would help Vyas frame the next set of couplets and so on. On the other hand, Ganesha was getting ready his writing material, especially the bhojpatra flattened pieces of bark and a special herbal ink for his quill soon vyas started his dictation things proceeded smoothly after a while vyas dictated a couplet that was very complex ganesha stopped writing and started deciphering the real essence of those complex lines vyas was waiting for this moment he soon started weaving more complex couplets Vyas would see a childish twinkle in Ganesha's eyes whenever he succeeded in deciphering the meaning of those couplets. Ganesha would chuckle and write down the script with more enthusiasm, and so the process went on. Mahabharat, the great epic. The Mahabharat is one of the longest epics ever created in the world. It consists of around 88,000 verses and each verse is a long passage. Ganesha proved to be a wise writer as he wrote down each and every couplet only after understanding the real meaning of it. He did not lose his patience and the long pauses in between helped Sage Vyas compose the couplets properly. Meanwhile, when the process was going on, the quill that Ganesha was writing with broke down. Ganesha knew the value of time and the value of the conditions laid by him and the sage about the non-stop writing of the epic. So without any delay, Ganesha took his broken task, broken by sage Parshuram, and resumed work. This showed his dedication, commitment, and concentration to a task at hand slowly the work of writing down the great epic came to an end the mistake of ved vyas ved vyas was famous for his work of writing several scriptures he is one of the most knowledgeable people known till date but the great sage also committed a blunder while composing the puranas While composing any great scripture it is a norm to start with the mangal shloka greetings to ganesha to carry out work without any obstacle but vyas was so proud of himself that he forgot to write a mangal shloka as a result the sage faced several difficulties and hurdles in executing the work on the puranas even after completing the task his work was not complete Vyas left many gaps in the script. A puzzled Vyas then approached Brahma. Brahma welcomed Vyas and heard his problem patiently. Vyas said, "Almighty, why am I facing so many difficulties in my holy work? I intend to create scriptures through which people can know how to lead a good life. The knowledge of the Puranas is very important for every being, but all my efforts are in vain." Please advise a solution. Vyas realizes his mistake. Vyas requested Brahma to devise a solution to his dilemma. Brahma thought for a while and found out the blunder Vyas had done. He said to Vyas, "O oh sage, how can you forget Parvati's statement? She had said that before starting any holy work or any ritual, Lord Ganesha has to be given due respect or else all efforts shall go waste but you forgot to do so now you should pray to Ganesha and seek his forgiveness then only you will be able 
to get fruitful results. On hearing this, Sage Vyas realized that he had forgotten to write the Mangal Shlok at the beginning of his work. He remembered that every new venture, if started with Mangal Shlok, reaches its goal successfully. So the sage worshipped Ganesha and after getting his blessings, completed his work successfully. Who should be the leader? Once all the gods in heaven held a competition to find out who should be the leader of the world. The competition was that they would all circumnavigate the earth and the winning destination would be Shiva's residence, Mount Kailash. The one who reached the peak of Mount Kailash first would be considered the winner. All of the gods geared up for the competition and an auspicious time was decided. During the entire process, Ganesha kept quiet, sitting at one side with his head drooping. He did not take part in the race and gave up beforehand. While he was about to return, Sage Narad approached him and asked the reason for not participating in the race. Ganesha said, My mount is too small in front of the other god's mounts. I will never win the race. It is better not to take part rather than losing. Narad was disappointed to know this and decided to find a way to help Ganesha. Ganesha becomes the leader. Narad consoled Ganesha and asked him not to be dejected. Narad then advised him, Ganesha, every problem has a solution, so never lose hope. Stop worrying. Do you know the power behind the name Ram? There is an entire world hidden in his name. If you inscribe his name on the ground and circle around it, your mission will be accomplished. There is no need to go around the entire world. Ganesha was wise enough to understand what message Narad wanted to give him. He happily inscribed Ram's name on the ground and circled around it thrice. Ganesha filled with enthusiasm then approached Shiva's abode and told everything to him. Shiva was happy to know what Narad had preached to Ganesha. He said, Son, Narad is absolutely correct. There is a whole world hidden in Ram's name. It has tremendous power and I am happy that you have understood this truth. I declare you the winner of the competition. From now on, you shall be called Ganpati the leader of all and also Vinayak, the lord of all. Varenya Putra Ganpati Once there lived on earth a king named Varenya. He was blessed to have Ganesha as his son. His pregnant wife was due to have a baby soon. Knowing this, Ganesha told his mother, Oh mother, I should leave for earth and be born as a son to King Varenya. Parvati blessed him and Ganesha left for earth. Upon reaching Varenya's kingdom, Ganesha found out that the queen had delivered a baby and a maid had kidnapped the baby while the queen was sleeping. Ganesha took the place of the missing baby. But Ganesha had a strange appearance. He had four hands and a trunk. When the queen woke up, she was shocked to see an unusual baby beside her. She quickly left the unusual baby in the forest. Sage Parashar and his wife Vatsal looked after baby Ganesha in the forest. Ganesha grew up into a strong child. Meanwhile, a demon named Sindura was torturing everyone and making life difficult. Child Ganesha fought against the demon and killed him. Being the son of King Varenya, he was called Varenya Putra Ganpati. Dacoit Viprad Repents There was once a dacoit named Viprad. He had robbed many people and troubled every passerby. But soon he started feeling guilty about his deeds. So he approached a sage named Mughal. At first, sage Mughal was terrified 
to see a dog quite approaching him. But soon he found out that Viprath was there to confess his sins to him. The sage felt sorry about Viprath's state and said, "Son, calm down. I will suggest a way so that you may get rid of your sins." Mughal started chanting some holy couplets known as Ganesha's mantra and took a dry twig. He then fixed the twig on the ground and asked Viprath to chant the Ganesha's mantra after him. He asked Viprath to learn the mantra and take care of the twig as if he was taking care of Ganesha's idol. He said, "Viprath, pour water respectfully over the twig daily and chant the mantra." Perform this holy ritual with full dedication. Soon, Lord Ganesha will bless you. Viprat becomes Sage Bhushandi. Viprat sincerely followed Sage Mughal's instructions. He watered the twig daily and chanted Ganesha's mantra. He got deeply engrossed in the prayers and forgot about the time that passed. Viprat attained immense grace. due to his prayers and the associated penance by then a large tree had grown out of the twig sage mughal happened to visit the place where viprat was performing his penance he was amazed to see the transformation the sage book viprat up from his meditation viprat felt utterly blessed and touched sage mughal's feet in gratitude viprat was happy to see mughal again as he was the one who guided him towards the transformation suddenly a trumpet crew from the point of the origin of viprat's eyebrows sage mughal was delighted to see this and renamed viprat as sage bhushandi the trumpet was a symbol that ganesha had forgiven viprat and blessed him Tripurasur troubles all. Sage Grut Samad was cursed to have a demon child named Tripura, who had Ganesha's blessings. Now, being blessed by Ganesha made Tripurasur very powerful, and he started an assault on the gods, the sages, the humans, and even on the inhabitants of Patal. Tripurasur's rampaging spree went on, and finally he reached Mount Kailash. Lord Shiva's home. His supreme powers made the entire mountain tremble horribly. Having made a favorable impression on Shiva, Tripura Sir was asked to state his wish. He told Shiva that he wished to rule over Mount Kailash. Shiva moved to Mount Mandar after handing over Mount Kailash to Tripura Sir. But this did not satisfy Tripura Sir. He kept on bothering and disturbing the sages who rushed to Narad for help. The sages were told to invoke Lord Ganesha. Ganesha promised them that he would destroy Tripurasur and save them. Turning into a Brahmin, Lord Ganesha went to Amravati to deal with Tripurasur. Thanks for watching. Do like, share Subscribe to Sahil Book House